Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So my name is Nurse Nyomuch and I'm an overseas new graduate working and living in the UK. How is everybody? So we've made it to 500 subscribers. Yes, so exciting. Oh, wow, wow, wow. We've got so many things to talk about. So hope you guys enjoyed last week's video on the different pay bands and such um, that we get in the UK. And stay tuned for the comparison between that and Canada's pay band as well and how nurses get paid in Canada. But today, we are going to talk about my new position and my new job role. So I started this job role back in September of 2021. And honestly, I love this job and it's like, it is just what I needed it, especially after such a hectic and crazy year working as a band four um, in my last uh, job on the orthopedic ward. So working in critical care is very stressful and it's very uh, scary at times. However, I absolutely love this position. I love where I am and I love all the things that I am learning at the, t at the minute. What about this job role is that I don't come home uh, being stressed out. I don't come home frustrated, crying, angry um, and all that just because that's what I experienced all of last year and it was terrible. I would come home 9 o'clock, 9.30 and you know I'd be crying because of how insane it's been and now I just don't like I'll come home frustrated at like certain like little things but it's not things that are in my control do you know what I mean and so it could just be the nature of the job and such but there was other times where I came home frustrated at like you know management lack of support and things like that and I don't I would say I do not come home to that anymore what is HDU? We'll start off with that. So HDU just stands for High Dependency Unit and it is a part of the critical care division here in the hospital that I work on. And I think in a lot of hospitals as well, it is a part of the critical care division as well. So it is like a step down, I guess, from ICU. Level 2 provides um, a range of critical care, which includes non-invasive uh, ventilator support using equipment such as Vapotherm, CPAPs, and uh, VIPAPs for treatments of sleep apnea and um, other respiratory conditions. We also deal with lots of um, help support the like cardiac problems and such, and then advanced cardiovascular support as well, such as using inotrope drugs um, to help bring up blood pressure and such. The same as ICU up there. Um, I'm not too sure. I haven't been to ICU, but I know ICU are deal typically more with like the ventilated patients and stuff like that. So anytime any of our patients get ventilated, we send them straight up to um, ICU. Our patient ratio, which is just two to one on our ward. So we are where I am working right now. It's a 10 bed ward. So we will typically have five um, staff nurse, like band five staff nurses, and then plus a senior sister will which will be like a band six and stuff like that so typically on a good day when we are staffed properly we will have six nurses on at a time typically we will be doing two to one and that's just that there when we are short staff um then it'll typically sometimes it could be three to one and that's only big if we have we wouldn't do three level twos together you would do more of level ones so once the patients come up and we've given them all the support that they need and they're ready to now be stepped down onto a ward, then they would be what we consider level ones. So then that means they're just awaiting now a bed on a surgical unit or a medical unit and such. So then in that situation, they'd be considered level one. So sometimes if we are short staff, then we might have to double up and say somebody might have to take three patients and... Um, but they would only be level ones or you would get one level two patient with two level ones and again that it doesn't really happen but it doesn't happen very often as well so that's only if we are really short staff uh, most of the time if we are short staff enough like if we are short staff our nurse in charge would just take on patients which is also quite a difference that I've seen um, and 
compared to my other job where there would be places where the nurse in charge would absolutely refuse to take patients because they are the nurse in charge. So here sometimes, depending on how heavy the ward is, uh, most of the time the nurses in charge would just take patients if we were short staff. We are just a mixed HDU. Um, so we get to see, we see medical patients coming through as well as surgical patients. That has really shifted things, especially because a lot of the nurses were very divided before. So you ge generally just had your uh, medical nurses and then your surgical nurses. But now that we see both, a lot of them have to learn how to care for both types of patients. Um, for me, I feel quite lucky because I don't know the difference. Not that I don't know, but I've never trained differently. I know in Canada I've done training on surgical and medical wards, but I didn't work. So I'm learning all of it together as once, whereas some uh, nurses will say, oh, you know, I'm on the, I'm from medical, so we never did any of this stuff um, in the, uh, like any of the surgical stuff. So I feel lucky in the sense where I'm getting to see and learn all of it all at once. It's kind of stressful at times, but it's not. Like it's all right. So our typical patients that we see would be um, sepsis patients. A lot of those would be coming through. We get a lot of DKAs. We get a lot of people coming in with uh, PE, so pulmonary embolisms. Lots of post-op patients after laparotomy and all such sorts of um, surgery. Um, we get a lots of patients coming in also with overdose. Um, pneumonias and then lots again as well with type 1 and type 2 respiratory failure as well. Sometimes we just get people coming in just needing um, cardiovascular support so just people on metraminol or sometimes NORAD uh, depending on how much support they need. Yeah so it's quite cool and I think this was a lot, well not cool for the patients but it's quite cool for me in the sense that I'm seeing so much. Um, coming in <laughs> starting off was very very stressful I was just like oh my god because you come in and I think when I came in in September COVID was still quite at its peak so it was very busy all the time lots of people on all sorts of uh, support so with our um, we have people on CPAPs um, on the machines sometimes we have people on the vapor therms a lot of the time actually not sometimes most times it's all on vapor therm and the CPAP and BiPAP machines so those are very very um, stressful to learn at first again I still am not 110 percent confident on them however I do know a lot more than I came in knowing and so and it's just, it's one of those things where as you go on, you learn more and more. There's been some adjustments that I had to do, you know, when in uh, nursing school, especially in Canada, our lab values were very different. Not different in their same lab values, however, the measurements, the units of measurements were very, very different as well. So coming here, doing um, arterial gases and reading them, I was just like, uh, <laughs> what am I looking at here and stuff like that. So I've learned to also see that, you know, the oxygen, the PA, PO2 or, you know, the carbon dioxide levels and stuff like that on the gases would all be completely different ranges as to what I learned in Canada. And it's interesting because one of the girls who also works on our ward, she's from Australia and their units of measurements are the same in Canada as well. So she was like, wait a minute, what's happening here, right? So that took some adjustment. Overall though, I think the growth that I've had on this unit has been tremendous and it's been so amazing and supportive and also it's just been at my own pace which is also what's been so amazing about this job um I couldn't be more happier you know and again I'm more sad now about having to wake up and doing 12 hour shifts but that's part of the job however when I get to work it's all good and all of my stress is relieved and all that stuff because What's so amazing is every single person on my team is amazing and everybody is, they've, they've created such a environment that is so supportive from your other band vibes and your other staff nurses or even, you know, your band sixes nurses in charge or band sevens, you know, everybody is just so approachable. Everyone is always willing to help, which is like absolutely amazing and that that's the kind of culture I deserve to be in and I want to be in and it's amazing just to be a part of it. 
um, when I first came, I'm one who asks all these questions just to make sure I'm doing something right. It could be the littlest thing. However, I'll go to someone and say, hey, just double check in this. And they'll be like, yeah, that's fine, or whatever it is. Or no, we do act like this. I'm like, okay, cool. Glad I checked. But like, nobody makes you feel like shit. Nobody makes like make you feel like you shouldn't know this in that sense, you know? And they'll always be there to support you, which has been what has helped me a lot. So grateful that I have landed this. It's like, honestly, once you go critical care, you're not going back. <laughs> as stressful it is on, you know, we get a lot of stress because, like a lot of stressful days. However, everybody works as a team and everybody is there to support you and you're never feeling alone. And I think when I worked as a band four, there was so many times that I felt alone and I felt terrified and I couldn't go to anybody for support. And that's not how I feel at all. But it's also just very important because to have that here because our patients are critically ill. Um, but you never feel alone. And my favorite part is, you know, I've never seen this before, but when we get an admission, when I worked as a band four, I dreaded getting admissions because I had so much to do. Here, I still don't want admissions. However, when you get them, it's so much easier because everybody comes together. Whoever is available and has time comes together. And the whole, and it's even like written on the board when there's an admission. Like, you know, they made rules. And everybody comes together does everything and if I'm the nurse receiving I'll go help slide the patient onto the bed and then I'll go and take a handover and there'll be three four other nurses there doing other stuff from my swabs to starting my paperwork to you know attaching all the leads that we need to monitor our patients on and somebody's all these people are already there doing it and by the time I come back from handover sometimes all of my admissions <laughs> stuff is done. And it's just like amazing how much support you have. There's been times where, yeah, I've started off on my own, but however, when people do become free and available, they'll just come in and say, hey, what's left on your admission? And you're like, oh, well, I still got this. And like, yeah, I'll do it for you. And it's just like, that's the kind of dynamic that's there. And people are always wanting to help you and support each other. And so, honestly, it's been a blessing you know, and I'll have to tell you guys about the story of how I got this job because I did not apply for this right away. So it's just like everything worked out together or all, it all just came together and it's absolutely amazing. I would definitely say, you know, when I used to go to critical care or on my, as a band four as well, all the alarms would scare me, you know, da -da -da -da, or like a blood pressure of like 90 would scare me. Now you go in and you're like, oh, blood pressure of 80. <laughs> okay. Or, you know, you, just, you, you know when to panic, but like most times you're like, well, okay, let's get that back up kind of thing, you know. Or, you know, all these alarms, you're like, okay, you know what alarm they are now and you know not to fear them. And, you know, you know what alarms to fear, but you know most of the alarms are fine and stuff like that. So it's just so interesting to see, like, the growth that I've come and the knowledge that I've gained and stuff like that. And in these last couple months, I've gained so much more confidence. I'm approaching, you know, colleagues, doctors, other members of the, you know, interdisciplinary team and such like that. And it's just... I. I've gained so much confidence. I've grown as a person. I've grown as a nurse and stuff like that. So it's very, very grateful. I'm very grateful and I'm really looking forward to seeing where I will be um, in a year's time, maybe two years time and such. So yeah. Uh, during my supernumerary period too, I remember, you know, I had a great supernumerary period as well, which was absolutely amazing. And it was six, seven weeks. And I was so shook because I was like, I think I posted a poll on, I posted a question on it as well in um, on my Instagram page, and I said, is this too long? Because when I started as a band four as well in the ortho on the orthopedic ward, I was lucky to even I don't think I got a week. I don't even think I've got a week on that. So, you know, to get six weeks, I was like, whoa. This is crazy. And even coming near the end of my six weeks where I started to take on two patients, I was like, 
how am I going to do this? What's going to happen? Am I going to manage? And stuff like that. And it's just all about a routine. And it's all about, you know, your protocols and stuff like that. So it's just really interesting to know how I stress so much about one patient or two patients. But it was also an unfamiliar environment, which I've got to give myself. And so now where I have a routine, I know what I need to do. And, you know, I know the protocols and stuff like that. Or not, not all, but most of them, you know, or like I'm learning the protocols as I go. So that growth is amazing. You guys also in the comments and just let me know like what is your critical care um, experience if those of you who work in critical care. Um, also just not in critical care as well. Tell me about your workplace um, and just let me know what areas do you work in. How are you finding it and you know for international nurses that are here that have just come to the UK, new graduates and such as that. So just let me know in the comments and let's chat about it. Uh, if you do like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And uh, let me know if you want to know a little bit more about what I do. Maybe I'll go in depth with the medications we do or something. Just let me know and we'll keep in touch. Alright guys, I'll talk to you guys next week.